Hey garden friends! Today I uh, have some work to do on my Vandas. If you recall a while ago, last winter, I had an issue where my roots got very dried up and extremely desiccated and uh, I lost a lot of roots. And it's time, it's well past time to go ahead and give those roots a prune and I thought I'd just talk about it. It's really pretty simple and basic, but it doesn't hurt to go over these things. Now, typically your healthy Vander root is going to be green when wet. Uh, and that's not really, I shouldn't say typically, that's how Vandas are. They have nice green, full roots when they're wet. All of these guys that I have right here, their roots are cracked, they're dry, and they are still recovering. They're starting to put out some new growth, so they're recovering from the damage, but um, they have a long road ahead of them. They're gonna be okay. I did end up losing several of the Vandas that got dried out by those fans and from that cold, uh, and I was kind of bummed about that. Not kind of bummed, I was extremely bummed about that. I haven't lost a a Vanda in years, but you know, these things happen. It's part of the hobby and uh, we learn and grow from these things, so it's okay. But all of these guys right here are the ones who suffered the most that survived. So you can see in here there is plenty of brown within the green. I've gone ahead and soaked them so that it helps to see which ones are dead and here is an example of what nice healthy thick hydrated roots should look like you see how green they are they have some spots in them but this guy I just had soaking for a good half hour they're not getting any more hydrated than this that at least it's not likely this is my uh, cerulea semi alba has a spike on it but you can tell this looks incredibly different from the others and I don't have this set up with my other ones right now because my other ones also need to be hit with the fungicide so I'm keeping these guys separate for now because this one hadn't been exposed to the Thai black spot like those other ones on the orchid stand had been. What I'm gonna do here is I've got some stainless steel scissors they have been soaked in alcohol, but I'm gonna be going from orchid to orchid. Typically, I would say you should sanitize your instruments in between moving from plant to plant, but in my circumstance with my orchids, the way I have to keep them, they're on top of each other pretty much at all times. I wanna say November through uh, um, May, April. So if one of them's got something, all of them got something. It's not ideal, but since I have to move them to an indoor grow space and I have well over a hundred of them, keeping them far away from each other so they're not touching isn't likely. So I do use uh, fungicides and bactericides to help combat the passages of any diseases. And cutting off dead tissue, dead tissue is not likely to contain pathogens as long as it's been dead for a while uh, and these have the roots that are brown on these guys have been brown for a pretty long time so I'm gonna go ahead in here I'm gonna cut out the dead stuff and there's really no like magical method to it really I'm just going to whatever's you can tell is brown those are brown these little nubs are brown I'm going more for the big stuff in here right now and just cutting it out piece by piece it's going to take a while. In the long run, it's going to be worth it. These guys are going to look so much better by the time I'm done. Anything that has a hint of green in it, I'm going to only cut it where they're brown. I'm not going to cut the entire things if there's any green left in them, because any green tissue can still regenerate new roots. Um, they can branch out. Uh, in fact, some of the ones that are long and nubby but still have some green on them, I might go ahead and give a prune just at the green. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to come back because the tornado sirens are going off. Go figure, wish me luck. I did go ahead and I started the pruning process 
it's really not as bad as I thought. With these roots, you can tell which are dead. Because they're dry, crunchy. I did wet it down again just so I could get um, a better sense of what needs to be pruned. Now, the ones that, like this guy right here, this root right here, the tip of it is dead. But the rest of it still has green in it, so I can cut it a little ways back. But I do want to say, cutting live tissue, I did go ahead and sanitize these. Because I've got everything that looked like it was completely dead off, and now I'm pruning off dead tips. So, cutting into live tissue, I'm definitely going to sanitize. So I did go ahead, I gave them a rinse, put them in a little bit of alcohol. A flame is best, but I'm out of butane, so this will work. So just like that, there's still green in there, so I'm not gonna cut it. Anything that is still soft and still has some green in it isn't going to go. But any of these tips, like this guy right here, can we see that? That's gonna go. Because I want green. See, the inside of that is green. The inside of this one up here, brown. So I could probably keep going back, but I'm not going to. I don't want to put these guys through too much at one time because there is still a hint of green, which leads me to the next point. Sometimes the roots will trick you. You'll think they're alive because they have some green on them, but Vanda roots can get algae on them because we water them so incredibly often. So sometimes, if you're not quite sure, keep them wet and then run your hand through. Give them a little bit of a squeeze. And if your fingers come off with some green on them, then that might be a dead root that just has algae in it. This root's alive. It's flexible. It's just a live root that also has algae on it. So if it seems dry and crunchy and you're getting the green on your hands, that's potentially just algae. Like here, see, right here. This root, I would typically think, is dead, but it still has green in it. And anything that still has some green in it, I'm going to leave because it's... Okay, on that note, if you do have algae on live roots, you need to clean it off. You can use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser or just a sponge. Just give the roots a really good soak and then hold one end in your hand and use the sponge on your other hand and just wipe that algae off because your roots have chlorophyll in them which can absorb sunlight and algae is going to block them from being able to do that. Something that can take up water and provide nutrients to the plant, encourage growth and blooming and overall health. So if it's not completely dead, like stringy, see this is stringy up here? Completely dead. So that can go, and I'm cutting it just below because if you cut it just below, you might encourage the what's left to branch out. So in here, this guy in there, dead, dead, completely dead. It's really important that if you're pruning dead roots to get as much out from in the basket as possible, because the dead stuff can build up and decay and cause rot, which you really don't want. Vandas, I just accidentally cut the root. I said I wasn't going to. That's another thing. Don't get scissor happy, which I just did. But as I was saying, you don't want any type of dead decaying matter to build up too strongly inside of your baskets because they can lead to rot. They'll facilitate rot spreading to your plant or causing rot on your plant for that matter. All right, that's gonna do it for today. It was just a quick update. This was long overdue. There's still much more to talk about with these guys, but for now, I'm stopping here because I gotta get cleaned up and get on. I hope everybody's doing well and keep on growing. Bye-bye.